Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show a couple alternatives, a couple fixes you can use to deal with color cast. So if you've shot enough real estate photography, you know you've seen color cast. It's almost unavoidable, even during ambient light, especially if you've got a lot of light coming in. And if you've got empty houses, they've got hardwood floors and you're trying to light it, you're going to get color cast. It's almost inevitable. Now there's a couple things you can do to work around that. One is obviously you don't want to have a whole lot of light just flooding the room because what's happening with a lot of times with color cast when you see something like this this is just from the ambient light coming in. it's going to be one of the examples that I'm going to go ahead and show but there's something more to it if you try to light something like that you're going to get some kind of result that's going to look like this you can see that there's a lot of cast that's going all over the walls, a lot of stuff going on because the light is first bouncing up off of the ceiling, it's bouncing down off the floor, it's then going all over the walls, all over the ceiling. So you may think to yourself, well, I could avoid that if I'm using lights by maybe using an umbrella, bouncing it, going into the room. And you could possibly to some degree, but light is still just going to be scattered everywhere. So it's an explosion of light that's going on to stuff that's going to reflect back up. And this really happens when you're working with dark stuff. So if you've got a lot of reds in a room, you've got some dark hardwood floor, even some lighter hardwood floor will do this also. So it's almost unavoidable. It happens, like I said, even under natural conditions. But if you were to look at the house at different times a day, the amount of light coming into a room would be different. So getting rid of color cast would actually still give it a natural look and of course something a little bit better and something you're going to have to overcome using lights at some point or, or another. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, you're going to want to have some way of getting around it. Now I've shown some other videos on how to get rid of color cast, but I'm going to run through that again. It's one of the most asked questions that I get um, from people watching the videos and how do I get rid of that? I've got it in the advanced editing book also with some techniques. I'm going to share that with you here with a couple different examples and I'm going to take that a step further by showing some other stuff along the way during the entire workflow process. So you're ready to get started to take a look at how to get rid of color casts? Let's take a look. So this is the simplest case for color cast. This is an ambient shot that we're looking at here. You can see that there's a lot of cast that's being up, uh, thrown up here just from natural light, from the lights being on here, kind of that orange glow that's on the ceiling. There's some of it that's on the wall. Now we're going to be able to get rid of a lot of that with the uh, flash shot. So taking the flash shot, now we're overpowering the ambient. This is something I, I really emphasize quite a bit in the uh, interiors book. So overcoming the ambient artifacts. We've pretty much got rid of that, but we still have some cast going on here. Now this isn't such a bad case of where the uh, light was reflecting back up to the ceiling as I showed in some of the introduction. But we're going to get to that example how to fix it. But this is a very simple one to fix. So what we'll do is we'll just open these layers in Photoshop so edit in and then open layers in Photoshop. So with this, it's a very simple process to take care of a simple cast uh, issue like this. It's not even all that bad for this particular room to worry about, but it's a great example to just show how simple it is to take care of it. Now I'm going to use that 50-50 uh, flash ambient blend technique that I showed here a couple of videos back. So I've got already an action in place to do that. And so we've just taken care of that. Basically it was just turning that layer into luminosity mode and the opacity down to 50%. So since we got rid of the color out of that layer by turning it into luminosity mode, then obviously all that we're doing is just adding the light direction to it. So anyways, that looks good. Let's say that's fine for our edit. And now what we want to do is get rid of the cast on the ceiling. Very quick, you can turn this into an action, that's what I've done, but here are the steps that are involved with doing it. Take the lasso tool, and you don't have to be too accurate, just go somewhere around the ceiling like this, that's probably fine, you just don't want to overlap into the paint. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather that selection by 5 pixels. Now you want to go a layer, adjustment layer, and then hue saturation layer. Once you do that, it will make a hue saturation layer with whatever you selected. Then all you have to do is then drop down that saturation a little bit, and there goes away our cast. Now if you completely desaturate it, it's going to look unnatural, so you want to leave some saturation in there and some color. But here it is with that saturation layer to get rid of the cast, and then here it is without it. So you see there is a difference. If we zoom in a little bit more to, uh, to see that, then we can see without it, we've got that cast, and then with it, we've got something that looks better. We've gotten rid of that cast on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just close it out. That's the very simple process for doing it. 
not a big deal. Let's take something though more complex. So here's an example where a lot of light is flooding into this room. Now this is pretty much a builder stock, uh, kind of like a, a designer white that's painted on the walls. You can't really tell it though, because even on this ambient shot, there's so much light coming in, hitting these hardwood floors, and there's not enough furniture or anything else to, uh, to soak up any of that. We're getting cast all over the place. There's orange all over the ceiling, orange all over the walls. There's even some green coming in from the backyard outside. So a whole mess of colors. Now in something like this, um, to get it evenly lit so I can get enough color around, I tend to do a couple pops. So here I am, I've got my Explore 600 that's uh, near the camera, shedding just a little light into the foreground, and then I just take two steps uh, into the uh, background to then evenly light the room. And that gets rid of then those ambient artifacts. I'm getting rid of that shine on the floor. If you remember from the ambient shot, there was a lot of shine on the floor. So anyways, though, doing this, you can see I'm adding some of my own color cast in there. It's unavoidable. Even the ambient, you know, was showing uh, a lot of uh, red and some of the greens coming in from outside. So any type of light that's going to hit this room is going to make a color cast. You just can't get rid of it. Lastly, too, there's a, a window pole that I did here, and I'm going to show you a quick way to, uh, to put that in. Using the Explore uh, 600, being able to really overexpose that area, I got a super fast technique I'm going to throw in as a bonus on this particular tutorial. So anyways, I've already done the geometry on this. Let's go ahead and select all those layers. And as the keyboard shortcut, you can do this on Windows, can't do it on Mac, but you just go Alt P and then E and then O, O, which is basically the same as just open as layers in Photoshop. So these are going to open in Photoshop and then we're going to do this typical flash ambient blend like we normally would. Now this is going to be doing it with a composite. So there's some extra steps here that really don't have much else to do with this particular tutorial, but might serve as a refresher for you. So I just wanted to kind of do the whole thing, get you through this. If you want to move on quickly to the other one, you can jump ahead maybe about a minute or so, but do encourage you to kind of watch this whole thing. It might uh, help help you out with some other stuff and I'll show you some shortcuts along the way too, especially when we get to the window pull. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. And right now, all I'm gonna do is take this layer and shut it off for now. I'm gonna work on my composites. And so what I'm gonna do is take this one layer, remember that I've got this pop, that pop, I only need half of it. So like I show in the books and I've shown in other uh, videos, just go layer, mask, hide. I'm gonna take a brush at 100% opacity and make sure that at least I'm out of there. Okay, I want to make sure that there's no ghost of me. Now the rest of it's pretty easy. I'm going to turn that flow down to about 30% and start tapping in that. And now I've got myself a composite. So I've got two uh, photos, uh, two frames that we're taking, and now they've got something that's fairly even. So that's good. And once again, like I described in the interiors book, this is really just to get the color across the room, but there's still cast to it. So if we take a look, this was the ambient shot, a lot of cast. We've got a little less of it here. We've got more even lighting though. And then we've got the, uh, the floor basically knocked out. So I'm gonna turn this into then luminosity mode and then uh, layer mask hide. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint in real quickly uh, this luminosity that I want. So I could probably do the 50-50 technique on here too, but I'm gonna do this because I really don't want much shine on that hardwood floor. I want a lot more control. And don't worry about those windows because we got a window pole, so we can go right over there as much as we want. So let's say that that's just about what we want. Maybe a little bit of shine coming through. I do like to have a lead-in line uh, to doors uh, to go outside, darker front. So anyways, that looks pretty good. Not too, uh, not too worried about that. And maybe the fireplace, a little bit more ambient there to really show that. Now, before we get to the color cast, one last step and a neat little shortcut to show you, window pull. Bring him up to the top, overexpose, just like I talk about in the interiors book. And let's go ahead and turn him into darken mode and then layer mask hide. Now you've seen me before uh, use a brush at 100% to do this, but this guy is so overexposed, the entire area using that explore, I can do a shortcut. I'm going to take a polygon tool. I'm going to draw a polygon all the way around the window. It's going to even go down here to the door. I'm going to go up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it. Just do control click. Closes the polygon. Switch your colors by hitting X. Hit your delete key and then hit X back so you don't forget. And then control D to unselect it. Boom. There's your window pull. Done. Don't have to worry about brushing it. So we could do something here like we did before where we could draw a polygon around the ceiling. We could do the, you know, feather the selection by five pixels and then put in a saturation layer. But there's another way to do this. So what we can do, let's go ahead and just shut this off so I can get a better uh, example to show you. 
So I'm shutting off that ambient layer, excuse me, the window pull and the ambient. Now if you remember, I've got these two shots down here that were composited together. I'm going to select both of those, and if you just had one layer, you just have to duplicate it. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and take these two and duplicate it with a Control J. That duplicated those layers. I'm just going to merge them together, merge layers. And like I said, if this was just one layer, you wouldn't have to do the merge, you just duplicate it. That's it. Now, what I want to do is go to the image, and then I want to do a, uh, a color match. So I go to Adjustments, and then Match Color. Okay. Now this is a magic little tool here. The best and fastest way usually to do this, to get rid of Color Cast, is to click this Neutralize button. Once you click that, you can see the color cast went away, but it neutralized the picture so much that it actually turned it blue. So what you can do is with the fade slider, you just fade some of that in to where it starts to look then about normal. So that looks probably pretty good right about there. So without it and then with it. Now, right now we're only worried about the paint. I'm going to take care of the wood here in a second with a super quick fix. So anyways, let's just go OK on that which is good. And then I don't want the wood interfered, so I'm going to put a layer mask to reveal all. I'm going to take a polygon and I'm going to draw it around the wood, the floor, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete all that. Now you don't have to be all that accurate because I'm going to show you another way to get around this. Okay, so once we've got that in there, just hit your delete key and that then deletes it. Now you've got your wood. If you needed to use an eraser maybe over on these cabinets here, I'm erasing some of that over there. If you wanted to do some other stuff around here, you know, you can erase it and blend it in. But then also if you use a fill instead of opacity and drop your fill to maybe about 80%, then it fills in where it needs to to adjust basically that color. So let's take a look at the difference. This is with our fix for color cast and this is without it. Now let's turn on our other layers and this is what we have. So without with the color cast, this is what we were up against and with our color cast fix, this is what we're up against. So much better, much better improved. Once again, if we wanted to fill that more and get rid of more of that color cast, we could by upping that. If you really wanted to go more and leave a little bit on the, uh, the walls and you wanted to do it on the ceiling, do the other trick too. Go ahead and take a polygon tool and draw that polygon around the ceiling. Don't have to be too accurate, you know, wherever it is, that's totally fine because it's just a little bit of a touch. And then all you do is go select, modify feather by five pixels, then layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation layer, and then drop the saturation a bit on that. So there we've got it. Color cast basically solved. So it may look like a lot of work when you're doing a full composite, you've got a window pull, you've got these color cast layers that you're putting in there, but once you get used to doing this, you just fire it right off, especially get used to using keystrokes. When I do the uh, image adjustment match color, it's I am, that's how I remember it. I go Alt I A M, just use the menu keys and boom, that window comes up, hit the neutralize button, hit the fade slider, you're done. It's very, very simple, very fast. So these are quick ways that you can get around. If you see that color cast, sometimes you might not see it all while you're on site and you come back and you go, oh, once you see it on the big screen, yeah, oh, I use too much lighter, there's too much uh, color cast, however it went, this is another fix for it. Now, that's just not for white walls. You can also use this on various colors on walls too. I've seen it on the beige walls, the gray walls, yellow walls, all kinds of stuff. And it's pretty good at doing that. And once again, by using that fill, the only filling in so much, not just on the fill for the layer, but also the fill slider on the image match, then you've got quite a bit uh, of flexibility that you can do to use the amount of reduction of color cast that you want on that. And then of course, when all else fails, just go ahead and use a desaturation layer, especially ceilings. They're the worst to collect color cast because they're just collecting everything that was uh, bouncing light off of the floor, off the furniture. It's gonna be from all over the place if you use enough light or enough ambient lights coming into the room. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.